So in this final video, I want to talk about some of the more advanced elements you can incorporate into your pages using the daylight templates. And I also want to talk about designing with accessibility in mind. In terms of accessibility, what we're really talking about is making sure that whatever you post to Brightspace is readable by students no matter their circumstances. In the most obvious way and in the most common thing we're thinking about is making sure that no matter what kind of device a student is using, they're able to, to easily read that material. So whether they're looking at it on a 24-inch on a computer monitor or whether they're looking at it on a 10-inch tablet or whether they're looking at it on a 4-inch smartphone, they can still read the material, they can still see the images, they have the same access to the content that you're providing them as any other student does. But we also need to think about accessibility in terms of visually impaired students. Some students uh, are able to use a screen reader, which is a device or an application which actually takes the the content of a page or a PDF and speaks it to the student because the student's not able to read it on their own. But we need to make sure that we've designed our pages so that they don't miss out on anything. The places they miss out on those things the most are images and videos. For videos, we want to make sure we always provide a transcript for students, and we always want to make sure we provide captions in our videos so that students with hearing impairments are able to get the content again, just as, as readily as any other student. In terms of images, we want to make sure we provide descriptive text of those images so that a student who's not able to see the image can still get a description of the image. In HTML terms, this is called the alt text or the alternative text. And I'll show you how you can address that on these pages. It's pretty much built into Brightspace. As long as you're filling in the details when you add an image, you'll be fine. But you want to make sure you provide descriptive text and not just something kind of really dismissive when you're doing it. So I'm going to go down to my edit page and go to the visual editor. And I'm going to click on this image. And I'm going to click on the image options button again. And you can see right here image description. Image description is the text that would be spoken to somebody accessing this course with a screen reader. For an alt tag for the image description here in Brightspace, we just want to make sure that we tell the student this is what you would be looking at. And that's it. Right. So now again, a student who would be looking at this page with a screen reader would get that message, that text description of the image read to them so that they would know that there was an image there and they would get a general idea of and then I want to go through and make sure that all of my images had this. Now one tool you can use to make sure that you've done this is the accessibility checker. So if you take a look at the bottom of the visual editor panel, so if you click on that little eyeball check mark icon, it's going to pop up and it's going to say, hey, you've got an image here that needs an al some alternative text. And then you can see there are other things as well. So if you have a table, you should have a caption attached to it. Right. And the easiest way to fix these is to actually come in here and then go to the table properties and turn on the caption setting. And if we scroll down, we realize there's some space at the bottom of the, pa of the table. So now, that, again, that is a caption that a screen reader could read to a student to say, hey, there's a table here, and this is the kind of information it contains. Obviously, a table like this would be very hard for a screen reader to work through and for a student to really follow along. So providing that kind of descriptive text, whether it's to an image or to a table, helps students who aren't able to view the page as other students are able to. Other things we want to think about with accessibility are colors and font size. It's usually best to leave the font size alone in Brightspace. Uh, don't try to play around with it. Uh, the more you try to force it in a certain way, the harder it is you're going to make it for other uh, people to read. Brightspace already kind of changes the headings to make it a certain size versus the basic text of a page. You also want to be really careful of uh, colors in designing these pages. You want to make sure you've got a high level of contrast 
between the background of the page and the background here is white, which is a very safe way to design a page, and the text color. Most of the text is black. You don't want to have a very, very, very pale blue font on top of, say, a white or light gray background. That's not enough contrast, and for somebody who has some degree of color blindness, they're going to have trouble seeing that. And then if you get really crazy with the colors in terms of yellow fonts and red fonts, that's going to be even harder. And you want to make sure you're not using text color to indicate any important information. Don't use color as some way to say, hey, this is a really important piece of information. Because again, somebody who is colorblind is not going to be able to necessarily see that. So those are some important things you want to think about in terms of accessibility. Let me now show you a couple of ways you can make your pages a little more interactive and engaging while organizing the content a little bit better using daylight. And we'll continue to talk about the accessibility features of those as well. So within daylight, there are special templates that you wouldn't actually use to create a page, but they have certain elements that you might want to copy over into your pages. The way you access those is the same way you would create a regular page. So we're going to go down to create a file. And we're going to get our blank page again. We're going to click on select a document template. And we're going to go down to these bottom few right? elements, images, accordions, and tabs. And I'm just going to click on the first one, elements. And that creates an elements page. And now I'm going to give this a name. And I put temporary there because this isn't something I'm going to want to leave for the students to, to have to look at or figure out, right? This is something I'm going to keep while I'm designing the site, and then I'll delete it before we start using it for class. But you can see here, this creates a page that has a number of elements that you might want to incorporate into your documents, just again, to give them a little more style. Some of these may look a little familiar to you because you've seen them um, in some of our pages. So you've got the, the large numbered order list which is pretty nice. You've got this lead text, which is different, so it looks a little bit different. It stands out. You can also do block quotes. You can do these jumbotron things, which is kind of big, bold, with an inversion of the color. Again, still maintaining that high degree of contrast. Or you can do a more standard callout with a, with a border. Or you can do a callout with an icon embedded in it. And you can also create a nicer looking table. And you can also create this kind of two panel structure as well, so almost double columns. If you want to incorporate any of these into one of your pages, all you would do is, again, come to this page once you've created it, go into the editor, and then scroll down to the element that you want to copy. And notice for each of them, it says start copy, end copy. Make sure you're in the editor to do this. If you're not in the editor, it's not going to copy properly. So I want to use this lead text in my, uh, in my page. So I'm going to go ahead and copy from here where it says start copy, and I'm going to go down to end copy. And I'm going to click on Command or Control C. And then I'm going to back out of this and go to my actual page, and I'm going to again go to the editor. All right, and now we see. So now again, the students have a little visual clue, and if I do this consistently for each page that I create of lecture notes, they're going to know by the heading, right, by that image heading, that it's lecture notes. And then they're going to know that this is kind of my introductory paragraph that they want to take a look at before they jump down to these timelines or these bullet points. And again, the way they know that is because of the visual clues. So we're creating a visual style that helps the students, if we're consistent with it, follow along and find information quickly and easily. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to incorporate a couple more things to make this page a little more engaging, and then we'll come back and take a look at what I've done. All right, so after a little work, I want to show you what uh, I've done to improve this page a little bit more. Let me just step back out here into my module, and you'll see I created several more of those temporary pages. Again, Elements shows you some of those small, specific elements.
images page gives you some better ways to insert images into your pages. In particular, it makes it possible for you to give your images a caption. So not only do they have that hidden alt text that we talked about, but now each image also has a caption that everybody can read. So again, they understand exactly what's going on in that image, which is again, it's just another good element of design. And it shows you how to do left align, right align, and wider kind of full align image. The accordion page is kind of unique. You've seen that in some of our other modules. Accordions let you kind of hide information until the viewer wants to take a look at it and then they can click on these uh, things and it kind of slides open. This is a great way to organize information if you have a lot of content that you want to put on, on a single page, but you want you can kind of chunk it up and help students not feel so overwhelmed by all that content, but also see how it's organized a little bit. So instead of just having paragraphs or maybe headings to separate it, it's actually visually separated for them. So they only see each part of it as they're working through. And then finally tabs, which work a little bit the same way, but slightly differently as well. So you can switch back and forth between one, two, three, or even four tabs. And you'll see how I've incorporated that in just a minute here. Again, all of these things are ways to make the page a little more appealing, a little better organized, um, and also a little more accessible as well, instead of just big chunks of text. So we've got my header image here. And again, I went back and I added that alt text. Right? I used the caption formatting from that elements page uh, to kind of visually signal to the reader that this is the introduction to the page. You can see I, I improved the images by using that formatting. So now I've got captions underneath these images of William Apis and Harriet Jacobs talking about who they are. So they're not just these random people. And then down here I had these special sections because I was comparing how Romantics at the turn of the century were different from some of the later romantics, but there's a lot of parallels, right? So it talks about how early romantics saw the individual versus how dark romantics saw the individual. So these tabs are a really nice way of kind of comparing two chunks of information. And again, it condenses the page a little bit, so it's not quite so overwhelming. And then finally, I think this table looks a whole lot better now, this timeline. It's still a whole lot of information. Um, but it's it's not information they have to memorize. It's information that's there for their their sense of context in terms of the history of the literature. But it looks a lot nicer, right? It's it's spaced out a little bit better. It's got this nice heading at the top. It's got a nice clear caption down at the bottom as well. So I think this is a huge huge improvement over what I started with, which was just a bunch of fairly small text jumbled together in some lists.